Hello guys, welcome to Jayhook and in today's session we are going to look on how to set up Kubernetes dashboard on our Kubernetes cluster. Uh, during this session, I am going to share this guide uh, with this tutorial. So you can find the same uh, guide in the description section of this video. So please follow the same guide for setting up the Kubernetes cluster. To set up the Kubernetes dashboard, we have three environments. One is on Minikube. Second is Kubernetes local cluster, which the cluster which will run on your development machine. Either it can be your laptop or desktop on which you are working. And third option is the Google Kubernetes engine or the Google Cloud platform. But for today's session, we are going to focus on setting up the Kubernetes dashboard on local Kubernetes cluster. Uh, if you followed my previous tutorial, then I have showed how to create a local Kubernetes cluster either on CentOS or Ubuntu. So uh, you can follow those tutorial if you haven't done those setup earlier because that's the primary requirement if you want to set up the Kubernetes dashboard. So you should have your Kubernetes cluster up and running. So please follow and I'll put uh, a link in this video. Maybe you can see in the top right or left section uh, a little pop up. So if you haven't done that, then please follow and set up your local Kubernetes cluster first. But in the next video, we are going to uh, do the same Kubernetes dashboard setup on a Google Cloud platform. So that is something cloud service which is provided by Google Cloud. But uh, today's session, let's focus on this uh, Kubernetes local cluster. Before we jump into the step number one, first we need to check whether our uh, Kubernetes cluster is up and running or not. So on the left hand side, I have a terminal where I have already started my Kubernetes cluster. So the command which you can use is kubectl. I'll increase the font here so that you can also see kubectl uh, get ports. Okay, so here you can see there are some application which is already deployed. And the one more command I would say group kubectl get nodes. Okay, so here you can see there are two nodes which is up and running, node one and node two. So that means our Kubernetes cluster is up and running. So you need to have this uh, set up already or the Kubernetes cluster uh, working before. Let's jump back to our guide and click on Kubernetes uh, setup on a local cluster. And here you can see uh, I have mentioned the same thing over here also. And if you didn't find anything, then you can uh, click on this link also. So this is the guide for setting up a local Kubernetes cluster also. And it's, it will lead you to the same uh, video and guide. Okay, so as step number one, we need to install the Kubernetes dashboard. So this is the step which we are going to perform. And for that, we need to get the YML because everything we do in uh, Kubernetes, we use YML and we apply those YML. So for that, we need to download or we need to apply that YML, the dashboard YML to our Kubernetes cluster. And for that, the command is this one. The command is like kubectl apply f f for force and then https the url of the yml file so just copy this yml or the complete command and paste it into our terminal so now as you can see we have pretty much installed our dashboard yml into our kubernetes cluster Moving to the step number second, we need to start our Kubernetes API server. And for that, the command is kubectl proxy. So the copy the command and paste it into the terminal and it will start our Kubernetes API server. And as you can see in the guide, I have mentioned an URL. So you can use this URL to access your dashboard. So your dashboard is in a uh, working state and now you can access your dashboard. But uh, if you are doing this for the first time, then you need to fix your certificates because uh, uh, Kubernetes works on this secret key and uh, certificates, which we need to install into our browser. So, but yeah, you can see we got, got an error, uh, like this is a forbidden user. So we are not allowed to access the Kubernetes dashboard because we don't have that exact certificate which is needed to access that URL. So first we need to fix this issue and then we can access the Kubernetes dashboard. To fix this issue, first we need to uh, create a one more terminal and we need to log into our Kubernetes cluster. I'll increase the font here a bit so that you can see. Okay, so I'll first switch to the directory. Okay, and then I will log into 
my Kubernetes cluster. So this is my Kubernetes cluster. Okay, so now I logged in. Uh, for your information, I can show you the same nodes. Okay, so it's the same uh, cluster on which we are working. Okay, I'll clear the directory over here. So before we start troubleshooting, so you have to be into the directory home slash vagrant if you are using the vagrant setup. And then we need to generate the certificate. Uh, and for that, we need to use this command. I'll put this command into the description as well as I'll update my post or the guide which I shared with you. So I'll, I'll update this uh, guide so that you get this command. So first you need to generate the certificate. So it's doing nothing. It's just basically generating a certificate which is called kubeconfig.crt. So you can see this command, this file using this command. So here we can see that uh, cube config CRT the certificate has been generated next thing we need to do is we need to generate the key and for that the command is this one so here we are generating the cube config dot key I'll hit the enter and we can again check the file is it created so yeah we have created the key also now next we need to generate the certificate or the .p12 file uh, which we are going to import in our browser. So for that we need to generate it and for that we are going to use this command. So this is an OpenSSL command where we are going to generate this cube config.p12 file. This file which we are going to import in our browser. So here you can see on the right hand side this is the error we are getting. So we need to troubleshoot and for that we need this certificate. So first I'll generate it and it will ask for a password. So I'll keep password empty. Uh, you can keep any password you want but uh, for the time being for this session I'm keeping this as empty. Okay, I'll again check the file. So here we can see uh, uh, we have this file kubeconfig.p12. So now we have generated the certificate and based on that certificate we have generated this key and after that we have generated this p12 which is a certificate which we are going to import in our browser. As you can see, we pretty much generated all the files. Now we need to copy this kubeconfig.ptl file to our local system so that we can import it in our browser. And for that, I'm going to use the scp command and uh, I will mention my file name and the address. So this is my scp command where this is the scp keyword, the, this is the file name, and this is the address of my local laptop or developer machine. Then I'll hit enter and this is the password which I need to enter for my local developer machine and the file is copied. Now how to import this certificate into our browser. So for that what we need to do is I'll increase the screen size here. Uh, just go to your preferences. This is the Firefox I'm using so it might be the settings or any other option in our in your Chrome or any other browser. So but for Firefox you can use this steps so go into preferences and then here just search for certificates then uh, click on this view certificate options and here just look for the option your certificates and there is an import option. So click on it and after that look for the file where which you have downloaded recently so that's i have downloaded into yeah this is the file which i have downloaded so i'm just gonna double click here and it's gonna ask for password since we didn't mention any password so i just click ok and as you can see this is the kubernetes admin security uh, device is the software security device serial number and this is going to expire on May 27, 2021. So it's one year validity. So click OK. OK, now what you need to do is you need to restart your browser to make that certificate in effect. So I'll restart the browser and I'll come back. OK, so now I have started my restarted my Firefox and I'm just going to enter my URL again and as you can see it's the same URL which is like pointing to 100.0.0.2 that is my vagrant IP address and I'll hit enter and then it will ask this site requested you to identify yourself with the certificate click OK and go to advanced option and then accept risk and continue 
and it might take a little time to load the dashboard and as you can see now we are able to uh, log in or not log in but at least we can access the authentication page of our kubernetes dashboard now our kubernetes dashboard is up and running and now we need to insert the token uh, in the next step uh, we are going to generate the token uh, for a particular user and we are going to supply that token over here and once you click on the sign in then you will be able to see the kubernetes dashboard Moving ahead to the next step as now we have pretty much configured the dashboard now we need to set up the service account and the roles so the step number three uh, we need to create the service account and here you can see uh, we have created an YML uh, that's a configuration file and here we have mentioned the kind of account which we need so that's a service account and the name for that user we are using is admin user and the namespace uh, where we are going to create this user is cube system okay so now i'm going to copy this and head over to your terminal and i'll clear screen here and i'll insert it okay so here as you can see this is the message uh, service account admin user has been created so name of the user is admin user and this is our service account and we are going to use the namespace is cube system okay and uh, then the next step comes step number four where we need to create the cluster role binding uh, now we have created a user now we need to create a role and bind that role to that user so this is the configuration file for that purpose and here you can see the kind we need to define previously we have defined the kind as a service account here we have defined the kind as a cluster role binding and as you know uh, user and role so we need to bind the role with the user so again we need to define the same username over here which we have used previously so that is admin user and then uh, Kubernetes used RBAC role based access control for authorization and the role is cluster role which we have uh, given or we have assigned the name is cluster admin and the kind is service account which we have used previously over here also and again here we need to mention the name of the user that is admin user and the namespace namespace should be the same cube system and here the new uh, in the previous step the namespace was cube system okay so now i'll copy this command and paste it over here in the terminal okay so here you can see cluster role binding rbac authentication kts io admin user created so now we have created the role binding for our user moving ahead uh, in the next step we need to create the token uh, as you remember uh, when we got, uh, enabled or when we access the kubernetes authentication page it was asking for a token or config file so we are interested in token so we need to supply that token over here and for that we need to generate that token first so this is the step number five where we are going to generate the token and uh, uh, the generation token command is this one kubectl and then this is the namespace slash n that is cube system and if you remember we have used this uh, namespace over here also in the name uh, in the cluster role binding and the user creation and describe is the keyword uh, which we need for token that is secret secret is also keyword keyword and this is some additional uh, commands which i have prepared for you uh, which you can pretty much use and uh, to generate the token so uh, what i will suggest is just copy this command for generating the token and uh, uh, head over to your terminal clear the screen and paste so it will generate a token for you and as you can see this is the command which we have run and uh, this is the token details token metadata you can say which has been generated name uh, namespace and labels on annotations and this is the actual token a long string so just copy this token the complete token and go to your authentication page and paste over here and as you can see now we can access the kubernetes dashboard uh, I'll, I'll maximize the screen so that you can see uh, 
So here you can see this is the dashboard uh, which is running on my local cluster or this cluster which I have set up locally. So this is the dashboard for this. And in this dashboard you can see some of my application which I have uh, deployed previously so it's already running there so this is the deployment like a demo and this is some helm chart application which i have deployed so these are the deployments which is already running on my kubernetes cluster so in your case it might be pretty much empty you won't see anything but don't worry it's because you haven't deployed anything so here you can just uh, move around so i have deployed two applications so these are the two applications which is running and if uh, I can show you via command prompt also, then you can yeah, get more information. So just to see like how many deployments are running. So that this command you can use. So yeah, there is one demo. So you can see this is the demo and this is the chart, some 153 number and then Spring Boot. So both are Spring Boot application, but one I have deployed manually and one I have deployed using Helm. So this is our dashboard and there are so many options like jobs, uh, ports, how many ports are running. So here you can see all the ports detail, replica set, if you want to replicate uh, some of the sets, then replication controller. So there are many options which is provided by Kubernetes in the dashboard. So this is how you set up your Kubernetes dashboard on your local Kubernetes cluster and uh, this is the way you can have a UI version of all the commands which you run on a terminal.